I want to thank everybody who came today for our ribbon cutting for the Lucidity Distillery. And now, if I may, I would like to welcome our mayor, Kathy Carlett, who's going to share a little bit with us. Thank you, Guy. Wow, I just think that it speaks volumes for how much this was needed and what a great asset this is for our community to have so many people here. It's standing room only. And I seriously hope that this is not beyond the fire codes. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, you know, I found out just this week that the population in the city of Peoria, we have new census numbers now, uh, over 171,000 people live in our city. It's a, it's a big city. We are no longer a small town. Our span, our geographic span, is almost 200 square miles. We are big. We go all the way up to Yavapai County. We're in two counties. But what is really critical is that we never forget where we came from. This is our core. This is our history. This is our base. This is who we are. If we forget who we are, we can never be truly who we should become, all that we should become. So I want to thank the Lucidi family, Chris, for preserving who we are. It matters to us so much, and it's not an easy thing to do. You know, we can build more rooftops, and we can continue to expand and expand. Developers love that. But for somebody to come in and revitalize and restore and bring back to us our character and our history, that is so meaningful. It's not easy, and it's not easy being a small business owner either. So you're doing double duty here, not only being an entrepreneur, but also restoring um, our core personality, if you will, our character. Uh, so it's, it's really meaningful to us as a city. It makes us substantial. It shows that we care about things that have more more than just rooftops, more than just dollars, more than just a strip center. We care about who we are. And that's, who, that's, that's the city of Peoria in a nutshell. We need to always make sure that we remember where we came from so that we can be the most that we can be in the future. So um, I'd like to thank the Lucidi family, Chris, for being here day and night and night and day and restoring this place in such an incredible way. I mean, everybody who is here today, don't forget to look around. These lights, he made them on his kitchen table. This, this ceiling, he put every single one of those pieces of wood up there himself. I mean, these turnouts, the firefighter uniforms that are there, they were donated by firefighters in Peoria. This is the real deal here. This is the real deal. We need to make sure that we come here and we spend lots of money <laughs> for a long, long time. <laughs> yeah. Now I would like to introduce to you um, the council member for this district, Vicki Hunt, and I want you to know that, that the history of the city of Peoria runs through her veins. She cares about it so much. It really is, is everything for her. And, and so I know that she was here almost every day with Chris Lucidi. She would check on him every day. Chris, I'm here. How you doing? When are you going to open? Uh, she, she cares very, very much about this, the Acacia District, and this, the history of the city of Peoria. So Vicki Hunt. <laughs> Well, thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Guy, for putting on this great event, and thank you, Joey, for the food. Uh, well, isn't this just it? I mean, isn't this, what else can you say? At the, actually, Kathy said most of what I was going to say, but um, we have waited so long for this. We have waited, we have been working actively on enhancing our downtown for 19 years. And you can go back in the books and it's there, 19 years. Some of us have been here that whole time or at least the last uh, 12 or 14 of those years. 
This is the first example of a revitalization plan carried to fruition here in Old Town. And what that is, is that's a partnership between the city and a private individual who wants to put together a business like this. Now, I think the reason that Chris has a heart, he doesn't just have a pocketbook for mine, he really has a heart for what he does. And I think the reason that he chose to enhance uh, this building to be what it used to be was because firefighters down here, some of them who have already retired and have come back to visit, really provided the heart expansion that, that uh, Chris needed to be absolutely sure <clears throat> that this is what he wanted to do. Just a tad of history, this was originally an old movie theater and um, then it, it, 52 years ago it became a fire, firehouse and it was fire station number one and then about 10 or 11 years ago it was really awkward in this day and age to be a fire state because they had the trucks had to park tandem and then as we got the bigger trucks with everything on them to make us really safe they just didn't fit in here so we built those guys a new fire station just across the street and down the road there and unfortunately this beautiful old building sat empty for about 10 years except we used it for storage uh, when Chris came to us with a plan to work with the city on this, the one thing that we said was, yes, we'd love to work with you, but you have to retain the historic integrity of this building. And he said, that's exactly what I want to do. So it was really a hand in glove fit. As far as, yes, I was here nearly every day. Chris thought he was Michelangelo for about two weeks. He was on his back on scaffolding, not painting, but uh, nail gunning all that old wood uh, in place. And he, he did make all these jars with the Edison bulbs. The firefighters have been in a lot. Now, they don't drink on duty, okay, don't get me wrong. But after duty, they have been in a lot. They have donated, if they see he's missing a, a whatever kind of helmet, they bring it in the next time they come. This really is not just a shrine to firefighters, but really a shrine to uh, earlier generations and the heart of Old Town Peoria, that giving service part that will always be here. And Kathy, I really appreciate what you said about we cannot move forward uh, without remembering our past. This is what we came from. And to move forward, we have to honor this. And so, Chris, I cannot thank you and your family enough for really putting your heart, as well as your pocketbook, um, into this business. And I don't even have to say I hope it thrives. I know that it will thrive. And it's the catalyst now for a whole city block here of revitalization. So I'll echo what Kathy said. Come here and spend money. Thank you. I got five thank yous to the mayor and council for supporting the project. Honestly, I, I know that you guys have done these. Most of us have been at these. It's not BS. I couldn't have done it without them. Vicki, this is your district. Thank you so much. People joke about you stopping by here every day, but it happened. It's not funny. It's There were, when I started this, people that cared about the project more than I, that literally, <sighs> every day, we're here. And it was worth every penny. I'm not, excuse me. It was much appreciated. Um, she's not here, but Bridget, in the Mesquite District, where I live, helping me all the way. Um, her efforts and what she's, she's done where we actually live are amazing there's john her husband let's embarrass him everyone hi john um what i see with the council and what they're doing or should i say the elected because that includes kathy kathy's been the tip of the spear in relationship to this revital revitalization downtown and there are there are programs and plans that most people don't know about from a, a commerce point of view that if you come down here, they will get behind you. And I think that needs to be advertised more. 
just to the extent that business owners know that the city's here waiting downtown with open arms. Um, number two, thanks to the staffers, the people that don't get the credit. Jen, <laughs> people that actually support us behind the scenes that never get recognition. Um, it goes from the city information office, don't, you're blushing, <laughs> that don't get noticed. I mean, planning, development, Chris Hawkes, um, Andy Granger, uh, Scott White. There's all these people that actually bring this whole puzzle together that they do it without knowing they're gonna get credit for it. And I've been to a lot of these. Uh, you, frankly, I don't like these things. I, I just, I just wanna go to work and make money. That's why we are business owners. But the people that helped me, I could go on for an hour and I've actually shown Kathy in a meeting a stack of business cards and it's this thick with everyone that helped me. It's invaluable. Um, thanks to the fire department and the PD. This was not an easy project, and all their support and encouragement made this work. Um, trying to keep it together. Thanks to my dad um, and my brother, Joey Lucidi. My little brother, <laughs> Joey Lucidi. I, I, I don't, none of this works without the haymaker, the restaurants being behind it. But for every board I get credit for, for nailing in, and every brick I set, um, my father and or my brother was behind. And most importantly, where is she? Tanya. Thanks to my wife for believing that a distillery <laughs> was a good idea. Um, seriously, all of you go home and say, I'm quitting my job selling the businesses, and I'm going to open a distillery and make whiskey for a living. See how that goes over. Um, but she's always trusted in everything I've done, unequivocally, and I love you. Um, so we're happy to open, and this is great, but ladies, gentlemen, drop in the bucket. This is phase one. Um, we didn't just buy this building, we bought more, and then we have an option for a little more, and I'm actively looking at other properties downtown. This is off. <laughs> Okay, off the page, no notes. Um, truly, if you were to be a business owner and you're looking at downtown, look here. Look here because the city has multiple programs that not only help support you financially, but with planning, with development. This is something that's going to explode. So show of hands, please. When you have an anniversary or when you have a birthday, where do we all go currently? Where? No, yell it out, don't lie. Everyone goes to the east side. You go to Topgolf, you go to Scottsdale, you go to one of those events. We can build that here, and it's very simple. I mean, there's some properties that need to be acquired. There's some space, but know that the city is there waiting with open arms. They want you here. I'm going to be there hugging those open arms very soon with phase two and everything else we can come up with. So thank you so much for coming. Sorry for getting a little bit emotional but I didn't cry. <laughs> One.